Hi, welcome back you guys. Um, today, I'm actually going to do my first story time. Okay, so yes, I know. I'm wearing a sweater. It's okay after Christmas to wear a sweater, right? I think it is. It's warm, so I'm wearing it. Don't judge me. Also, ignore the pimple. Okay. <coughs> to preface this, I used to work at a bank, so... And I was a teller at a bank. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to anyways. Okay. I need to set my phone somewhere that I don't see it. Because I get distracted easily. As you can probably tell. Okay. The first story I have is um, this lady thought that her neighbor was a witch. A witch. Boy. No. And I spoke to her on the phone before I ever even saw her in person. You could just tell she was a little... <whistles> but, anyways, she would say that her neighbor, that was a guy, I thought only uh, women could be witches, but I may be wrong. She knows more than I do. <laughs> um, he would go through her walls and... Um, he would be able to see her bills and her bank account statements and he even stole her checkbook one time. That's what she said. I heard this all over the phone. This lady, the first time she ever talked to me, disclosed all this information to me. I don't know. But we had to put a password on her account so whenever she called over the phone or whenever she came in we can know that it was really her because this witch neighbor guy could shape shift and he could look like her and sound like her so she had password on her account and I mean when she came in for the first time you could you could definitely tell like short little old lady you know glasses about this big covering her whole face and she's got a wig on and it's not like a, oh, that's a, you know, quality wig right there. That's, it's a, oh, man, uh, was that from the 99 cent store? <laughs> because, uh, I could have probably made it myself. It was a little, it's a little interesting. And then talking to her, she, uh, she was very touchy. She grabbed your hand and she would, you know, she got the crazy eyes going on. She's like, but. Okay, the second story I have for you guys is about a lady who got arrested at the bank. That was an interesting day. Okay, let me start out by describing this lady. She was, I mean, she wasn't a short lady. She was tall and pretty skinny, probably about as big as round as my pinky finger. But she was about 5'10". She had long, mousy, like light brown hair. She had these big old glasses. <laughs> I don't know why, because she was probably in her early 30s, I would say. So she had no excuse to have 80s glasses on, but if that was her style, whatever. The best way I can describe it is she looked like that girl, you know, probably in high school that you cheated off of and you asked for answers on your math homework and she would never say anything because she was too nice and too sweet. Yeah. This was her. So <laughs> she had been banking with us, you know, for a while. So she would, I would, I had seen her before and she'd come in and she had done her thing. She'd cash her checks, deposit money, and the girls that had worked there longer than me, they knew her grandpa. And I guess her grandpa was a really sweet guy and um, they had known him for a while, but they hadn't seen him in a while. I guess she had said that he was, um, he just couldn't get around on his own anymore, so she did his errands for him. So he would, um, he would sign his checks over to her. So on the endorsement line, he would sign, and she would sign underneath. So um, that's a good reason why you don't sign your checks before you go to the bank. Because if somebody steals your checks and they're already signed, they can cash them because they just sign right underneath. But um, anyway, so she would cash his checks for him. And I, our accounting department kind of caught on that she was forging his signature because I guess they were just a little suspicious, you know, after a while of her cashing his checks. So they matched up the signatures that they had on record from a while before that they knew were his and matched up the ones from now and they weren't adding up. So 
we got a mass email saying, if you see this lady, you know, report it, and we will call the police. So, I pull up to work one day. There are like three or four police cars sitting outside. I'm sitting in my car going, okay, was there a bank robbery? Like, <laughs> what's going on? So, I figured if the police were there, it was fairly safe to come in. So, I walked up to the doors. They weren't locked, so I walked in, and we have two big um, teal-colored ottomans that were sitting in front of where the tellers are stationed. She is sitting on one of them, with her hands behind her back, handcuffed, so I walk in, and I'm like, try not to make eye contact with her, because I'm like, uh, mm, this is a little awkward. <laughs> so I walk around, and I have my keys, so I walk to the back where our um, teller's drawers are. I unlock mine and it's near the drive through so the girls in the back were like, stay back here, we can fill you in, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know how girls are, they, I mean, they gossip, inevitably, when they work together. So I was like, okay, cool, you guys, I'll stay back here. So I got my drawer out, and I stationed myself back there. And um, <clears throat> so I guess basically what had happened is she came in, and she came to the front, she didn't come through the drive through so she came in, and um, was trying to cash another check, I believe. So the teller that she had went to saw that, you know, that's the lady we're trying to catch. So she was like, hey, hang on, I need to get some change because I don't have enough to cash your check. And made an excuse to go to the back and call the police. So she goes to the back. I guess that lady, she um, kind of caught on. She was like, uh, this is weird. She's gone way too long, plus she was probably a little bit guilty feeling and a little nervous anyways. So she leaves the bank, she goes to get in her truck, and she starts driving off. The road she tries to drive down is right <laughs> in front of the window, the drive through window that the tellers can see through in the back. So the girls back there saw everything, basically. So she's trying to drive off. Soon enough, not 200 yards, she didn't get 200 yards away from the bank. Police pull up. So they stop her, they pull her out of the truck, handcuff her, walk her happy little butt back into the bank, and sit her down right on that ottoman. So, um, here's the thing is, her grandfather had been dead for two years. Bank didn't have any, uh, I guess, record of his death, nothing like that. So, yeah, her grandpa had been dead for two years. She had been cashing his checks for two years all his social security, all that kind of stuff. She had just been cashing it in. And here is the kicker. Here's the kicker. That truck that she has is her grandpa's and she stole it. It was not written over to her in his will. She stole it. I don't, I don't, why would you steal one money to your grandfather's possessions? And who knows, she's probably living in his house, which is freaking weird. I don't know. Why would you take that from somebody that is you're related to? Why would you steal that stuff from anybody in the first place? I honestly I think that's a little disrespectful, but that's just me, I guess. Some people. <sighs> wow. Okay. Really hope I don't get in trouble for uh, saying this, but <laughs> there you guys go. That was my um, two little bitty story times for today. And it would really help me out if you would subscribe and give me a like down below if you like this video. And um, if you have any ideas for any DIYs or any questions you want to ask, you can leave those in the comments below and I will get back to you guys on it. And I want to come up with an outro, but I need a little help. I don't really know what to say besides bye. So uh, right now, it's just bye. What we do here is go back, 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 back.